What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Average Money Podcast, a co-host in the building tonight. As you guys may or may not know, depending on how far into May we are, this May we really wanted to feature people from the community that have either been following us or on their own journey, a little bit more relatable, separate the the YouTube creators and the influencers and everybody out and, and show that not only I think we can humble ourselves and, and show a little bit of relatability to everybody, but let everybody know that you don't have to be an Instagram, TikTok, YouTube star to be just killing with money. And some of our guests are even dominating us. If you are new to the podcast, my name is Brad Finn. I am joined every single week this week in New York City. JJ Buckner, how are we doing, bud? I'm good, dude. I'm excited. I'm excited for today's episode. I'm excited for the month of May to be able to bring on our guest, our co-host, and, and discuss how the typical you know, average person out there is, is handling money, how they're killing it with money. I'm excited to introduce today's guest. Um, so I'll get right into it. Sean has been a follower of mine for a bit on the YouTube side, YouTube channel. And him and I have exchanged messages since I think right around like I was at around 10,000 subscribers, I believe or so, whenever uh, Sean and I started talking. And Sean actually is killing it with money. And he, him and his wife actually, which we'll get into details on this down, later in the episode, but him and his wife just crossed the, the $1 million net worth mark. Two comma club. Yeah. Dude, that's huge, man. So guys, today's episode, I want to bring in our guest, Sean. Hey man, we appreciate it. Sean is from Calgary. He's Canadian. Canada. Or how do you say? Canadi- Canadian. Canadian. Can- yeah. Hey, 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 Sean. <laughs> Sean, hey, hey. I'm rubbing off on you guys already. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, hey, we, we really appreciate coming on, bud. We're excited to hear your story. Uh, I want to start back, like, let's let's go back to maybe, like, uh, did, first, did you, Sean, did you go to college? Or no, let's let's do this. Let's inter- introduce yourself a little bit. Tell yeah. them who you are, what you do. And yeah, all give, the- give the uh, basic rundown, yeah, how old yeah. we are, and... Uh, I'm super pumped on the Canada piece, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I thought we would keep, save the Canada thing till later because a, a million bucks Canadian is like, you know, 50 bucks US. So <laughs> <laughs> He said That's so. Okay. I hear it. In, yeah. I hear that so, so yeah. in his voice. Go ahead, go. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so yeah, thanks for having me on the show, first of all. And uh, like I say, I am now 35 years old. I, uh, I'm about 15, well, no, uh, 12, 13 years into my career here, but we'll go, we'll go back and tell you where I'm from. So I grew up in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. My education, I'm a mechanical engineer and uh, started working out kind of in utilities and doing little projects. And, and, uh, and, and our, our city here is basically built on, uh, but if I could characterize it, it's kind of like the, the, you take the f- economy, the fuel of, of, of Houston, because it's very oil and gas, but you stick it in kind of uh, into Colorado because we're next to the mountains. You kind of have that kind of mix, I guess you could say. There's, it's a mix of maybe those two U.S. cities. But uh, I grew up here, um, so kind of kind of watch the city boom and grow and then bust a little bit because it's a very cyclical type of uh, industry. But anyway, yeah, I graduated. Um, I did an internship during school, graduated, and I've been working in that industry, kind of doing projects and stuff and started off kind of on the technical side. And then the last few years, uh, switching companies, I'm doing project management now. Um, yeah, I uh, got married to my wife almost five years ago. We had we just had a, a kid last November. All right. And- congrats. Thanks, guys, and it's uh, it's been a very very different vibe in the household ever since. But really excited. He's like he's a super super nice uh, baby. Well, I guess I'm biased, so he's a really good. No, baby. trust me. When you have another one, you'll know. You'll see, yeah, <laughs> you'll know if it's a good baby or not. I I used to think the same thing. Uh, my daughter's an angel, and then I had my son, and I was like, my daughter is an angel. <laughs> <laughs> you should definitely have at least four or five more kids. You'll see. Okay. It gets easier every kid. Every kid, it gets a little yeah. easier. Yeah, totally. So, so it's kind of um, we got into this whole thing with uh, with k- taking charge of our finances. Uh, I guess starting with our backgrounds, like both of our parents emigrated to North America. So we didn't grow up with much. They were kind of coming from you know, maybe war ravaged countries and things like that, which is a whole other thing. But, you know, when you talk about investing and things like that, to lose the first 10 years of your career 
uh, to give that up and come over here to just start a new life is a sacrifice in itself, which you understand when you really understand investing, right? Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is like, we both come from humble backgrounds. We were pretty good at like saving money and like making sure we spend only on what's important to us and that kind of thing that was sort of built in. But what we weren't too savvy about was more about on the investing side, right? So I was just trying to be smart, like first year out of at a university, um, first time I'm making any real money, like how do I how do I make this? I, I understood inflation, right? I'm I was an engineering student, so numbers don't intimidate me, hopefully. Well, not too much, right? So so I was like, okay, I'm going to the bank trying to figure out percentages. Okay, I get this inflation thing. What do I do? So I started with uh they put me in mutual funds, right? Which is like we know more now they're not like the best thing but to start out with your first few thousand dollars it's better than putting it in your mattress and hoping it'll grow right so wait sean if i could press pause just one second so you were saying that as immigrants and coming in they were more hold cash put it under the mattress and so you guys you guys were good at living frugally and, and living within your means but making money grow was something that was a little foreign to the family that's right. That and and like, don't be in debt to anyone. That was the big. That was a big thing too. So like, debt bad. That was that was like something that was taught to both of us. So that was uh, that was that was. We never really argued about that kind of thing. On that front, we were on the same page. But then I started to kind of get into this investing route, and uh, I started doing it actually before I I you know got engaged to to my wife and got married and stuff. So there was a bit of a conversation there to get her. Uh, I guess caught up to to where where I was with that like education myself, and I still hadn't you know done anything. My stuff was still in banks and things, but but sure enough, um, after reading some books, like I read uh, I read Rich Dad Poor Dad like early in my twenties, and then started reading. Uh, there was one book, uh, Money Master the Game by Tony Robbins, where he really gets into the index fund thing, and uh, and he's talking about he was. I remember specifically him talking about the fees on those mutual funds and bank products. And I said, I'm like, no, I don't think that's my situation. I'm pretty good with reading all the numbers and making sure. And sure enough, I go, I look up all my mutual funds and I'm paying 2.6% or something like that on these things. And I was like, no way. So that was when I started having a lot of meetings with the, uh, my, I'll put this in air quotes, financial planner that's at the, who's basically like, as long as you're happy, I'm not going to call you. But um, I remember I had two, three meetings with him and I finally just asked him, I was like, listen, I'm like, is this something like, do you, you work here? Do you invest in these funds? And I remember. Great just, question. Yeah. I'm like, do you invest in this? And he just, le- he leans back and he kind of looks at me and kind of, he kind of smiles and he goes, um, I think it was the most politically correct answer I've gotten, but he goes, I use my, I use my, what is it? He said, I use the education that I get here to do my own investing. That's what he said. It's a good answer. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. But no props to you, Sean, for one being take, your own advocate. Yeah. Like, like taking the effort to one, even research it because most people out there probably would just be like, it's in there. I know it's doing something. I'm not going to worry about it. So props to you for one, taking that initiative to like not having an understanding of how the investing side of it works, but then also working towards exper- uh, researching and saying, oh, what's this expense ratio? What are these fees I have to pay? And then not only that, taking it to the next step and actually having meetings with your you know, financial planner or whatever you say and, and figuring out exactly what he's doing. And then also on top of that, asking the questions that a lot of people probably- The right questions. Yeah, that a lot of people probably wouldn't have asked. Did you just fire him? On spot, what happened there? <laughs> was it like you're fired? Yeah. What was? I kind of shook his hand, and I sort of knew that was. And I think he knew it might be the last time he was going to see me. Yeah. yeah. I think I've broke up with girlfriends like that. <laughs> like you knew that was the last time you're ever going to see each other. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, in that last meeting, actually, my wife was there. We were, we were, I think, a few months away from being engaged. Or sorry, uh, married at the time. So, quick question about that. Yeah. Uh, so you weren't married to your wife yet when you figured this out. Uh, I don't know Canada's like uh, school system. Do you guys have like student loans up there, or is, is college free? Uh, no, no. It's uh, there's still student loans. I think like university is a lot um, probably cheaper. Okay. Uh, well, I guess it kind of depends, right? In the U.S., you've got all, all these choices, but mm-hmm. but uh, here, you know, you got your college, university, a few post secondary places. 
I'll give you a feel like engineering, maybe on the more expensive side now, I think it costs you like, it's maybe seven, let's call it seven grand a year uh, for okay. like four years. So it's something like that. Okay. Uh, here's a little bit less than like state school tuition here. Yeah. yeah. But Sounds it's not right. like, I think a lot of Americans have the, the mis- especially when you're arguing for mm-hmm. certain things like your national healthcare system and education. Like I've heard people been like, you go to Canada, the school's free, but it's not free. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I, I got, I'll touch on the student loan a bit. So I graduated with like 25 K in student loans. Okay. Um, but I was lucky enough to land an internship after my third year. And, um, when I, you know, like I'm living at home, right. I'm making an intern salary, but I'm living at home. So my overhead's super low. Um, and, and I, I basically, the only thing I really spent money on was just like eating out, eating dinner with my friends on Friday nights or whatever. And having a few beers, obviously, and, and, and having some fun, but I was stockpiling money. And then at the end of it, I was, I was kind of like, Hey, what do I do? And, if, and, um, I'll be honest with you guys. There was some, some, some of us, there was a big group of us, a whole class of us that came back from internship, 16 month internship at the same time. There was a lot of new cars in the parking lot. There was a lot of, Fact. uh, lifestyle that. creep, so lifestyle true. creep. Yeah. And, and I was kind of like, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to sit on this and see, cause I was in my head, I thought maybe like a, maybe a down payment on a condo or something like that in the future. And, um, so when I graduated, I actually still had that money. And then that was, that was, uh, this is kind of before my conversation with the financial planner, obviously, but I learned very quickly student loans while they're interest free start the day you graduate, they start counting, even though you have a grace period they start counting your your interest starts to go up, right? So right away, and I was like, I can't remember what the percentage was, but I'm like, well, I'm not into that paying more than I have to for something, and I had the money, so I just paid my student loan off right there. It's amazing that some people think like that, and some, and you mentioned before, like we, we were, it was instilled in us, don't owe people money, but it's amazing to me, and this was some because I was on the other side, but now hearing that there are actually people in their twenties that when you tell them you're going to pay interest and they're just like, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Why on earth would I do that? I can't believe that that breed of people actually exists. And you, you're like I said, I was, I was so willing to ask you like, so when did you screw up with money and then find out that you need to get your act (laughs) together? And you're just, you, you just in very lame and simple terms, like I, I didn't want to owe anybody money. Yeah. And you think that was? Do you think that was instilled from your parents, or like, where do you think that that originated from? It was. It was definitely. I think definitely instilled from like my mom and dad. They were just like they were. Like I said, they 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 had university educations um, for, like back home, but when they came over here, not technically recognized, and it's a little difficult to get qualified again and stuff. So they were working like, you know, um, regular jobs and stuff. Uh, they did have a bit of money that came over with them. And the first thing they did when they bought their house, when they were here, was they tried to pay off their mortgage. Because at that time, they're paying like 11% interest. This was, you know, Years in ago, the yeah. 80s. Yeah. So they're, so, so yeah, right away, like right away, that was like their goal. Pay off my mortgage. Don't want to owe anyone any money, even though that was like the only debt they really had. And, uh, and yeah, that was just kind of something that was in instilled in us, I guess, but also you, you kind of start to realize, and, and I guess we're getting into the like fire thing a little bit. Right. But, but when I, when I'm working at my job, okay. So started, I started my career in 2008. We all know what kind of year that was. And, uh, it hasn't been amazing since then, especially for oil and gas has been very like up and down and. And, uh, and right now it's, you know, the COVID's getting all the coverage, but if anyone's following the industry, it's even worse now. Right. So, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm sitting here going, you know, if I didn't have, so I guess we're getting into goals that I have right now, but if I didn't have my mortgage right now, I would not be worried about having my job at all right now. Right. Like my investments are doing well. Um, the only, the only thing that is a concern if you know I lost my job would be how do I get this mortgage payment? So we've you know done what we can to to make it a very manageable payment to begin with, hit all our financial goals. And I say this uh, I say this a lot to people, but um, I, I say I know it's not the most mathematically savvy thing probably because yeah. 
because mortgage rates are so low now, but I was like that, that freedom after this is done to just basically do whatever I want. Like my wife can stay home with the kid if she wants and only one of us have to work or, or I could save up and take a year off and do whatever I want. Right. Like, like I can do that so much more quickly when I'm not paying 1500 bucks a month to mortgage to a mortgage. Well, and I want to ask you this too, because this is a good, I want to talk on this for a little bit. So one, while you're having these thoughts of paying off the mortgage, you are also investing as well, right? Yeah, we need to go, we need to backtrack a little. Okay. Because we got ahead of ourselves, I think. We're sitting with the financial advisor. And oh, he, right, yeah. But like I mean, I there was one question I maybe I just Go ahead. Go, go, I, go. I want to get my question in. <laughs> you were sitting with this financial advisor and the things weren't really going right. And I want to get to all of those other things that you yeah, talked yeah, about. We will. But you were talking with him and you knew things weren't right. And you said that you had to approach your wife with an alternative plan as far as investing. Was the goal of fire, financial independence, Mm. freedom, paying off your mortgage, was that what you went to your wife with? Or were you talking to her just about efficiencies with money? I think we all have that moment where we have to have that conversation with our wife when we're, why we're having these thoughts. And I'm sure your wife was in a position like, Paul down at the bank, he's good for us. And now you have to try and advocate for yourselves to your wife. And JJ and I have talked about the goals that we used. You talked to your wife about staying home with the kids. Mm-hmm. I talked about with my wife about, you know, retiring early and getting what was how did you approach your spouse when you wanted to change the common philosophy of, okay, don't owe anybody money, but we're gonna save that money in the mattress? Yeah. I this is probably not going to be everyone's story, but but it just it's very it's very unique to who your wife is, the way that you approach that conversation, right? So um, so I knew she'd be on board with the whole like the, the whole debt thing that that wasn't even a question. Like we were we were on the same page with that, but with the investing stuff, um, she I, I wasn't about to be like you should go read all these books that I've read and then and then we can have a conversation about it, right? Yeah. I was sort of like I was sort of like okay. Um, I know the first thing that started when, with me is and and JJ, I don't know if you're the same way, but there's this thing with like an engineering like when something's inefficient, it doesn't sit well with you. Yeah. So I was like, so if true. there's a way, yeah, and I'm like, if there's a way I can get this to really be like like firing on all cylinders and getting the maximum benefit I can, that's what's good to me. So, you know, did my reading, I, I mentioned the books that I was kind of reading, and then I kind of approached my wife and I said, well, here's, here, here's what it, here's what I'm thinking. And, um, so my wife's an accountant. Okay. Oh, okay. Uh, Golden. So, so the way, so the way I approach this is, is like, this is what I mean is like, it's a little different. So it's like, I need like, I need like a pie chart and PowerPoint presentations and to say, okay, here is where like the efficiency My wife's a are. math teacher. Yep. And then I said, my yeah. wife's a math major. I showed her interest. Yeah, she was like, you go. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you, I, I want to see the numbers. Right. So, so I said, well, here's like, here's where this is coming from. And, uh, and so that approach, um, and, and she was actually also, like I said, in those meetings with me. Um, so, you know, we'd have a conversation, we'd go in, I ask the questions, he gives us some answers. We come out later on. Like, what did you think? You, like, perfect. Like, he, yeah. And, uh, and then, you know, that the guy, the guy did try to, all of a sudden he's very interested in, you know, changing our portfolios to stuff with lower MERs and things to try and get competitive, mm-hmm. but it's like, it didn't, it didn't end up working. Right. So that's when I asked him that question. I was like, okay, hey, I'm going to. I shook his hand and then, and then, yeah, that next month we were already setting up our online, you know, uh, brokerage account and moving things over. So you were attacking this as a team. You guys both were, you guys jumped in the pool together. Like you had the first initial fire, but when this had efficiencies and the fire movement, was this in your mind as I'm going to retire earlier or what it was strictly just efficiency? Just, it's really, it was really just efficiency. Um, so then when did the, when did fire come into when did that evolve into saying like all right well now we're investing did you know that if we keep doing this we might be able to really get rid of a bunch of fr- stresses in our life and find some more freedoms Yeah it, it totally Brad it's like it's not so much that we don't want to work or we, we don't want to it, it's more just like now I'm going to work because I I want to 
right? Like, like now I don't, I don't have this thing where like the man's holding this thing over my head where it's like, well, you need this job, right? It's just a different, you go into work every day differently. And I work, I work with a, a, another PM of mine who's 55 years old. The guy's like, you know, tomorrow he could probably retire. And he's got, a, he just approaches things with a different attitude. He takes more risks at work because he's not as like scared. He's not, he doesn't, he's, uh, he's, he, he says he's like, if they let me go tomorrow, I'll take my package. I'm retired. I'm at retirement age anyway. So whatever. Like, he's got that FU money. Yeah. He, he's yeah, got the FU yeah, money. Like, <laughs> yeah. So it's, and, and I could almost like, we're close for a couple years out from getting the mortgage done. And like, I can start to taste it now. Right. Like the it's, it's, it's becoming real. So yeah. So let me ask you this then, Sean. Is so you're we're talking about the mortgage, you're investing, uh, you paid off the student loans. I'm guessing those are paid off. So w- quickly, let's do this. What does your investment vehicles look like? And then I want to and then I want to touch on the mortgage aspect of this story as well. So what? And what, feel free to sh- talk about the differences that you know. Yeah. From from Canada to the United yeah, States. Yeah, for sure, man. So uh, of our investable money, okay, so not counting the house, because I count the house as part of the net worth, but it's not, you know, a cash producing asset mm-hmm. for us right now. So so investable money. Um, I, I was just looking at a chart uh, yesterday and um, I, I think it was some, it was over 75. I think 80 percent of it are just in ETFs. Uh, most of it in in uh, well, it's the Canadian version. We'll call it a VOO. Okay. okay. So, so most of it's in that. There's a few other kind of ETFs in there, for like like. NASA, what is that called NASA. for somebody that's in Canada? What is that called? Oh, uh, in Canada, yeah, it's it's still a Vanguard fund. It's called VSP. Okay. And it's Canadian hedged version of VOO. So okay. what that means is what that means is like if you invest like so if I want to invest in VOO, I got to convert money to to US by VOO. And then I got to, you know, it grows, does what does its thing. And then when I sell, I got to convert it back to Canadian, right? Canadian bucks. So what, what the hedging does is basically takes the conversion out of it. If, if S and P does 16%, like it did last year, it's 16% Canadian. And I don't have the variability of the dollars, you know, working against each other or for each other. Uh, you know, I, I take that variable out and I'm a very, like now I'm a very like, the simpler, the better. So for me, that's the simplest. Okay. And I just do it that way. Yeah. I like it. So you said that's how much? About 75% of that is in those ETFs? Yeah, 75% is in the ETFs. About uh, about 18% is in... Uh, is in I, I, I'm in a program, like a stock program with my work. Okay. One of those where it's like I put in... For every dollar I put in, they put in 25 cents or whatever. So that's grown over time. I've, I've tried to max that out and grow in that over time. Um, in my, you know, looking at my finances, I realize my position is probably bigger in that one company than it should be, but I'm waiting for the right time to diversify it a bit. Uh, and then the last 6% are, are, or 7% are in just like company, individual company stocks and and SPACs and little more speculative things. So you're a, yeah. you're a boring investor. I'm one of those boring investors yeah. <laughs> with a million dollar net worth. I mean, people, where are the options trades? Where are the, so true. where's the GameStop YOLO? I mean, <laughs> an, yeah. a, an amazing example at, of, of the simple path to wealth at 35 millionaire at 35. Yeah. I mean, dude, props to you, man. You're killing Thanks, it. Yeah. And I mean, I get so many questions and I'm going to throw you under the bus real quick. <laughs> uh, I did my research, uh, not knowing Canadian, but you you do have a small YouTube channel that you talk about Canadian investments and, and your journey a little bit. You have a small, ch- it's small. Yes, your YouTube channel? It's small, yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's like 1,300 subscribers. Like it's uh, just started to kind of- Well, now you got 2,000. Let's go, boy. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so part of the journey, right, is like I'm-, I'm, I'm going through all my paperwork, looking at these MERs and I'm, and I couldn't believe that I sort of fell for it for those years, the beginning years. Right. And, uh, and any, everything in that Tony Robbins book was, I was like, yeah, like a, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say the victim of it, but I was, I definitely fell for the marketing for it. Right. 
And so, you know, and I consider myself like I'm not intimidated by charts and numbers and things like that. Like I'm, I was surprised at myself. So I said, well, if, if, uh, if that can happen to me, this can happen to many people. So, you know, I, I was, I was uh, at work. Um, it happened to be around the same time that some of the younger, younger guys, younger guys and girls coming into the company started working, you know, under my project and, and you get to get to know them. And this is the first time they're making any sort of real money too. So they're asking me, you know, should I, should I buy a new car or, or should I finance or lease or should, like, what should I do? Rent a condo or buy? So, you know, we had, we had just bought our house and I'm walking them through, like, here's your options. Here's how you calculate uh, if it's the right choice for you or not. And uh, one of them just kind of said, you should do, he actually said, I, I think he said a podcast, but uh, then he's like, oh, he's like, yeah, you should, you got to post this stuff. Cause it's not like, I find it very interesting and it's not something that I like hear about a lot. So um, I had done some YouTube stuff, like in another life posted some fun videos and things that I shared with my friends. So I just was like, well, I know how to do that. So I, I came up with 10 ideas. I, I was only planning to do like 10 episodes. And I think I did 10 and did all my subjects. And I just thought, oh, this is kind of fun. And I had like 11 subscribers. Like it was like, <laughs> it was all people I knew. Like uh, my wife was one of them. So I really had like 10. And we, uh, all, we all started there. Yeah. <laughs> and then, but I kind of didn't, I was just like, this is kind of fun. So I just kind of kept putting them out, putting them out. And then um, it was just a, just a hobby. I'd come up with more ideas and, and put them out. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I started to do, I did one about like a Canadian airline stock. Um, that was when I, I kind of uh, asked you about JJ because I was referencing a video of yours in it. And uh, that one, um, that one kind of got like, you know, uh, over a hundred views for the first time. I was like, Oh, okay. Uh, it's interesting. And then you kind of catch the bug and you're kind of, you're kind of like, yeah. what else is going to be interesting out there? What do people want to know about? And, and I'll research it and just put it out there. I tell people all the time, if you are the go-to for your friends, for anything, like instead of answering the question, every phone call, if, if you know that if something happens, your friends are going to call you and ask you, you should have a YouTube channel. And like I said, we were, we found out about your YouTube channel way after we knew that you were a regular guy. And like I said, I wasn't going to, I don't, I know this is not about the YouTube channel, but I wanted to give you credit because that it's part of your journey yeah. and you're not doing it as a side hustle. You're doing it to help people because like you mentioned, the people that are dealing with financial advisors, they're not idiots. They're not dumb people. They're like you said, people that got caught up in the marketing of it and mm -hmm. they know what they're doing. Yeah, totally. So, and and this is where this is the part of the story where it kind of comes in because I I took all my money out of the kind of the brick and mortar bank, put it into an online broker, and I was still, but I was still in kind of um, um, uh, like a fund, right? Like a, a mix of different ETFs, and but then I I start to research and I start to read more, and then I realize well, instead of I went from paying two and a half percent to 0.3 percent, but I'm like I could even get to point. 1.09% if I do this, right? So it just with a little, I was just amazed with how just a bit of knowledge, like you can get to the front of the line almost with like the investing. So that that's what really um, drew me to this space was just how like, it's literally like read one or two books. And if it makes sense to you, you can go from paying, I was paying at the time, um, six thousand dollars a year in fees across all my investment accounts on how much money invested yeah that was the last year when i when we took all of our our money out of that out of that bank we were paying six grand a year in fees and how much money did you have invested like what was that six thousand on uh roughly at the time well two and a half percent right Okay. Two and a half percent was six thousand bucks. So I don't know. I could calculate. No, but, all right. But yeah. 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 Well, I, that's the thing, though. Six like, at at thirty, if you never would have taken that initiative to to talk to your financial planner and just left it, think about how much money as that money grew, how much money in fees you'd be paying until you turned sixty, sixty five, and and then you you know you retired and and maybe even kept some of it invested and you're still paying fees on it. Think about how much money you saved from reading that one book. That one book saved you. 
totally. tens of thousands of maybe even more than that of dollars. Has this evolved more? All right, so now you're being super efficient with money. You're a millionaire. You're 35. You know about the fire movement. What mm-hmm. you just had a child. Um, what's What's the plan? Like, are you are you pursuing financial independence, or are you in a position that's like, all right, I'm pretty good. If I keep doing what I'm doing, I'll probably just become financially independent by accident. Or do you consider yourself? I know you talk about the mortgage. Is that like your goal? What's your what's your financial goals or like lifestyle? What's what's that looking like for you right now? Yeah, the, like so. Good question. That that one, I'm kind of I sort of leave it open ended. I'm I'm not telling myself like, here's my fire number. When I get it, I'm going to just retire from my job and, and, and not work. Right. And sit at home. I, I, uh, I, I know from the fact that I've caught, like, you know, I'm working full time. I have a kid and I'm still trying to do a side hustle. I'm like that. I'm not a person who can just kind of relax at home. So I got to be doing something, but the difference will be, let's say, um, let's say I get tired of, of the industry kind of its ups and downs and I want to just do something different. Well, I'm probably going to take a huge pay, pay cut, uh, you know, going into a different industry or opening a coffee shop or doing something like that. Right. But if you're, if you're financially independent, you can totally do that. If that's what you're passionate about and that's what you want to do, um, you can take, you can take that pay cut and not worry too much about it because, you'll get to a point really where the momentum of your investments are making more money for you than your annual salary anyway. So, you know, if you're, if you're good on that end, like, yeah, why don't I try it? Try, uh, I'll just be a barista for a year and learn how to make coffee. And then maybe I'll do something with that. Like, I, I don't know. Like it's, it's just like the options are open for you. Right. Yeah, no, that's go ahead. No, he's looking for options. Yeah, no. And well, that's the power of freedom. You know, when you have that power of freedom and you've done your right steps, you've set yourself up for, financial freedom, you can take those chances. You can take the pay cut. You can go be a barista at Starbucks and learn how to make, you know, specialty coffees and then take the chance and open up your own coffee shop and do what you truly want to do. Like that's what I love so much about Fi and, and Fire. It's, it's it's not about like retiring early and go sitting on the beach in Hawaii drinking Mai Tais. I will say we talk to a ton of people and I almost wish I wrote down kind of like Tim Ferriss did like the common traits of people mm-hmm. doing really well. Everybody that we talk to that is pushing this financial independence, they all say the same thing. Yeah. I couldn't sit at home and do nothing. No way. Uh, and we mentioned this, like, I'm going to have a hundred jobs when I'm retired, but they're all going to be dumb little things. Like I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to go back and do all the, I've always wanted like a Home Depot vest with my name on it. <laughs> like I'm going to go work, I'm going to go work at Home Depot for a couple months, yeah. you know? And I, I'll tell you, go ahead. I got it. You just touched on something I said to my wife and I remember, so last year I had a really big project, which is a huge lift. It was taken up like all my evenings and weekends, like trying to just get this project done. Uh, like JJ, you know, project management can kind of just take over your life, right? Oh, yeah. Like, Cause you're the one responsible for everything. And I remember walking, uh, I, it was something like in a home Depot or something. And I see like the greeter at the home Depot and I'm just like, that guy doesn't stress about a single thing. Like, and I'm like, if you can get, if I could, if I could just figure out the finances in a way where I could just be the computer <laughs> at the home depot, I'm like, I'm doing pretty good. That's yeah. so true. No, it, it's, that's the ticket. So I quickly want to touch, I want to go back to this. What we kind of touched on earlier in the episode was the mortgage payoff. You kind of touched on, you know, I want the freedom of not having the payment. I want the lower expenses gives you that freedom. The wife can stay home if she wants to. So you said you are currently still investing while attacking the mortgage as well. What I want to know is first, I got to say this. So me and you have been in small little conversations through DMs for a while now. I mean, like since I've been at like 10,000 subscribers. Slide in the DM. That's right. But what, I got to say this. This is one of the coolest things that's happened to me as like a YouTuber is I posted a, uh, something on my Instagram. Man, I don't even know how long ago this was, Sean. But I had like a little chart uh, that I talked about 
my wife and I went to pay off our mortgage because we wanted that freedom in case YouTube stopped, you know, popping or whatever it was, whatever it may be. I wanted to have the freedom to know that my expenses are, are very low, that I don't have to go do something I don't want to do to earn, you know, a certain amount of paycheck. So then I think you, you messaged me, I think it was like, I don't know, maybe a week later or something. I can't remember off the top, off the top of my head. And you had this, 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 uh, this drawing of your own like tracker that you like so what it is like little boxes you highlight them and as you meet a certain amount of money that you pay off you get to get color in another box it's like a, a quick motivation yeah can you hold can you hold it up or I, I, don't you have it right sure. there if you're watching on youtube you'll be able to see it so he he made this go ahead explain it. Lindsay had done like a printed off this thing and every square was like a couple thousand bucks or a thousand bucks. And I was like, well, that's pretty cool. Like, and it's a lot, it's a, it's a goal that we were going to have. It's going to take us a few years. So I was like, why don't I, I like, to, I like to doodle and draw. So I kind of made, yeah, I made this thing. I'll try to put it up with the camera here, but there's like my wife and I at the start of it, every one of those squares, um, the, which is, and there's a lot of kind of like Easter egg things from cartoons I used to watch when I was like younger. So, um, there, every one of these squares you color in is uh, is uh, 2K, I believe, that we put in. So you got like little these little hills from like Super Mario 64 yes. and like things like that that I've kind of put in here. And uh, and uh, and yeah, and I've got these these flags for like at the end of every year where we're supposed to be um, at the end of 2020, 2021. And then at the top is actually just like a, a doodle of our house and uh, <laughs> standing next to it is JJ with a natty light. Let's go, um, baby. <laughs> Yeah, because he was a, a, a the inspo for this, and and yeah, we've just been filling it out as we as we go, and um, yeah, we're, we're keeps us on track. It's just kind of a fun thing to do. But you're investing as well. So is it? What does the mortgage payment look like? Are you adding a little bit extra, or do you have a Good fixed question. amount that you're, or you're just like, hey, when we get a couple bucks, how is that quote paying off your mortgage early? What? what a sparked that and did you need to convince your spouse to do that as well knowing it wasn't the most efficient thing or because i know in jj and i's relationships with our wives they've kind of given us the reins to kind of do stuff and you'd mentioned that you were going to these meetings together has your wife kind of especially with a newborn baby i i would think like has your wife let you kind of start to make some of the decisions or how is that working right now with paying off the mortgage Okay. Yeah. So with the investing part, my wife is, she likes it really simple. Like she's not interested in buying company stocks or anything of that. She's like, I got her kind of really um, happy with the ETFs and the index funds. And that's like perfect for her. And you know, the way they performed the last year, year or two, she's, she's happy with, she's like, yeah, okay, perfect. Um, I'm the one who kind of like, cause I'm in that, that space in uh, the investing space who likes to try a few things with with company stocks but not um i i i did that thing before um really getting into like index funds i did that, that thing where i tried to buy a few individual stocks and thank goodness i i didn't do well thank goodness i didn't use a lot of money but i learned my lesson early is what i'm trying to say right um i did make a little a, a, a little modest purchase on a little company called canopy growth which i know you're you're familiar with jj yes sir and it, did well with that one. Um, but um, I kind of realized, okay, I'm like, this isn't any sort of predictable kind of money that you can kind of plan around. So um, that's when I, I, I kind of found index funds and started to work, work those and convert mutual funds to index funds. So um, uh, back to the, your question about Natalie. Yeah. So she's really simple with that. But when it comes to with our mortgage, she's actually probably even more excited to get it done than I am. Um, uh, her parents were the same kind of way. They, they worked hard to, to pay off their mortgage and be mortgage free and not owe anybody money. Um, and, uh, and I'm the one who's kind of more like, but if you look at the percentages, like we could probably be putting this into ETFs and over the long term, it's going to make more money. But yeah, we could, we kind of come, we, we talk about this a lot. Like, like we're constantly, whenever we are taking, you know, uh, Nicholas for a walk and stuff like we're talking about this and what's the, what's the next step? What's the best thing we can do? So to, to make me happy, we're, we're topping up and keeping our like uh, tax deferred tax uh, sheltered accounts um, going. And then whatever's left over, we can put towards the house. But uh, th sometimes that ends up being more than what we invest. Sometimes it's about the same. 
Uh, but I also look at I also look at it in this way: is that if you know interest rates do go up and uh, something changes, you know, with with lending rates and that kind of thing, and and we still have a mortgage to pay, uh, this is still still an investment to me. It's just a low percentage investment, uh, and and it's hard to also put a dollar value on that freedom and just not having that mortgage payment, right? Mm -hmm. So, so again, like I say, I'm like mathematically probably not the best, best thing to do, but, um, it's not a bad thing to do. Yeah. I mean, you're, it goes back to like, you know, uh, should you pay off debt or should you invest? Like if you do either or you're winning what you're winning with money. So it's a good, like, it's a good problem to have. And I'll say this real quick to like piggyback off of the freedom portion. So Lindsay and I, we did just pay off our mortgage, you know, a few months ago or whatever it was. And I'll tell you what, I, I will never regret that decision. We were out in the backyard, you know, grilling some pork steaks and I looked over at Lindsay. I was like, babe, like this is our backyard. Like, you know, we don't know anybody. And, and, and yeah, could I have made a lot more money, you know, you know, putting it in the, the market and investing it for sure. But I also wouldn't have had that feeling that I have when I'm in my house, knowing that if something terrible would happen, my wife's at home, I'm the only one bringing in income. If my income would completely go away, I know that we're fine because our expenses are so little right now because that mortgage is gone. Man, I tell you what, it's it's an amazing feeling. So uh, props to you, man, on, on, on one, still investing, but two, also attacking that mortgage as well. Yeah, so it's seen, it is lower on your priority list. Like You, you don't have like foot on the gas, I'm paying off my mortgage. Your tax-deferred uh, accounts, they, they still are your number one priority. Yeah, I, I think, um, though, if you look at the last few years, um, we did have to, because house prices are quite expensive here, like I think compared to, I'm assuming compared to maybe uh, Missouri, probably not New York, but uh, maybe for Missouri. So it is, uh, it's a significant portion of our net worth. Like even when we own the house, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, just under half probably. So it's, uh, and it's just, it's kind of a reality of living here. That's, that's, that's what it is. You can't really do much about it. Um, so it does take a big chunk of, you know, what could have, could be more investable money or more, um, even money to have fun with or, or buy other, buy properties with or what have you. Uh, but it's, it's just, I think we think about that first year where we don't have it. Not only are we going to have a lower mortgage or sorry, not only are we going to have lower expenses because our mortgage payment is gone, but now we have all that money that we used to dedicate to paying off the principal as like, what do we do with this now? That's how yeah. I think about daycare. I was just saying to you yeah, yesterday, yeah. I'm like, do you know that in three years, I'm going to get a $30,000 raise essentially because I have a, and I, I understand exactly where you're coming from mm -hmm. with that portion. And you made another good point, which I don't even know if you were making it, but I at least thought to me, when you compare me in New York paying off my mortgage and you paying off your mortgage, the amount of money that is, a great point. it is, it's a larger efficiency sacrifice. JJ, pay, I mean, you're, you pay hundred and something thousand mm -hmm. off your mortgage. That money in the market, yeah, you could be more. You could be this, but the peace of mind. To me, paying it off, I'm thinking three hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. So now, what are the efficiency differences between a hundred and th this is it's where a, it's a lot larger percentage of your overall net worth versus like the hundred and sixty thousand dollars for my mortgage. Right. You know, overall, as I'm thinking about everything, I'm like, it really only would make up you know a certain portion of my overall net worth. So yeah, I mean that makes sense if you're thinking about okay, I have. X amount invested in this, and then I got X amount of count coming out of my mortgage. Maybe you should put a little more money towards the investment side until that raises up a little bit more, yeah. becomes a more overpowerful of your um, the over portion of your uh, total net worth, and then attack the mortgage more or less. However you want to see fit. It's a game that we. Can it's talk, all personal. We it's can talk to a hundred yeah. freaking yep. people about it, and every single person is going to give a different story. Yeah, that's so true. Sean, sure, man, this is. This is good. So I want to, what's your, like, what's your message? You talked about, you talk to people at work, mm -hmm. newer people. And I mean, dude, you're not old. 35 is not old, but I don't know what, what's the message that you give to people? Do you have siblings? Like besides like sharing your journey on the YouTube channel, which like you said is, is to help people. Nobody ever, I don't think many people join YouTube thinking it's going to be their job, but What's the message to people that are frustrated, whether they're in debt or they're getting started, 
or they hear about this financial independence movement and they think that it's hocus pocus and a bunch of magic tricks. Yeah. Um, I would say <laughs> there's a lot there, I guess, but, um, it's a, it's, the, the whole idea of, and the reason why when I like talk to people or, or make a video about it, I'm like super transparent. Here's like what my annual salary is. Here's what this is. Because I want people to know like, is that I'm not doing anything special. Like I don't have, like I didn't start a tech company. I didn't win the lo- the lottery. I didn't, what, like all I'm doing is taking time. And I'm not, um, the balance, like you guys are saying, is like I can't, I can't have it all right out of school without obviously going into debt let's say right um but so what i what i say is like if you're willing to just you know spend money on the things that really make you happy so for like my wife and i we like to travel so we don't have a we other than this behind me i don't you you guys that's the only picture on the wall in this whole house (laughs) it's uh whereas like you know we've obviously got furniture but you know, we, I have a, I have a bedroom set. That's what I had in, in my old condo, right? Like we're not, that stuff we'll try to save money on, but we like to, what we get value from is like trips and stuff like that, which we obviously can't do now, but, um, so spend money on the things that will really make you happy. That's a, that'll keep you going. And we put everything else towards our financial goals for now, because we know, and the evidence is showing the way we're trending that eventually we can have some of those things like like uh you want to if you wanted to get a new car if you want to do that kind of thing like later um so what i tell people is like it's totally possible as long as you're willing to be patient and take the time and it's not a drag as long as you give yourself the uh permission to have fun on the things that you really love to, love to do um you can't you know buy the new bends and the the mansion and all that stuff and then like expect yourself to be uh, it's to stay a millionaire if you're only, you know, you're, you're working at a company making a regular salary. It just doesn't work that way. Golden. Boom. Golden. Good man. We're dropping golden nuggets. Yeah, it's a patience thing. The, the two biggest things, I'm just thinking two off the top of my head. When we got the house, we got one that needed a bit of fixer upping. And uh, we, <laughs> thanks to YouTube again, but we figured out how to do all sorts of stuff ourselves. Uh, and fix it up and, and hopefully built in some value now that it's kind of we fully renovated the house ourselves uh, minus a couple things that was a fun uh, if you ever want to test your relationship go ahead and do that and then, <laughs> and then the other thing though and like the biggest thing uh, I have to go back to and I think you guys were saying this on an episode when you're talking about splurging a few weeks ago but it it honestly comes back to um, the spouses have to be on board if your if, if my wife was not like on board with any of this stuff, we wouldn't have gotten a house that needed renovations. We wouldn't have like got gotten a house that was half the value of what our bank said we could afford. Mm-hmm. We we wouldn't be set up for because we did that. We wouldn't be set up for paying off our mortgage. And if, and so like it's. And then, so it's not about like, oh, the spouse works and makes money and that's a valuable asset. It's like, does the spouse agree with trying to live on one person's salary? And if they don't, then it's, well, there's conversations to be had, right? So that's the, that like right now, I can't say my investments are making more money than, uh, than our salaries. It's, it's actually, it's because Natalie's on the same page and we talk about it all the time and we make sure like we're both uh, happy with where our goals are at. So. I love that. I'm sure there's listeners that are like, damn it, he keeps saying the same thing that everybody else is saying. Live within your means. Like, when is one of these regular people going to be like me that wants to be negative and make excuses and it's it's not going to happen? It's because that's what works. Yeah. Like, that is what works. And, like, some people will say, like, oh, well, you're repeating yourself or, all oh, like, I keep hearing the same thing, but it works. It's like Novocaine, simple. You, yeah, you simple don't. Simple and it works. You don't need to, like, reinvent the wheel. Like, follow the people who have succeeded before you and replicate what they're doing. It's going to work. Sean, I want to thank you so much for taking time out of your day. It's a Saturday, midday, and a little bit earlier in the morning. Hopefully, it's almost noon there and you can crack yourself a nice beer. There you go. JJ, you want uh, go ahead, go ahead. Beers on the table there. I'm, I'm here drinking my Irish coffee and uh, 
Nice. Yeah. Irish coffees. Were, we, <laughs> Where's the beers? We already there? we did Irish coffees already. <laughs> <laughs> we're like a, we're a little, a little past noon. We're about yeah. two o'clock yeah. in. But JJ, you have anything else to add before we let Sean get back to his Irish coffee? Man, I love your story, Sean. I want to say thanks again, man, for coming on. Uh, it's cool to uh, to hear you what you're doing, the big things you've already accomplished at already such a young age. You are way ahead of most people at, at the young age of 35. So keep doing it, what you're doing, man. Keep killing it. Um, thanks again for coming on, man. We, we really do appreciate yeah. it. And I, you, you'd mentioned how like cool it was. It's cool for us too. Like you yeah. mentioned, like oh, do we have these guys that we're watching on YouTube? Here we are. Like it's just as cool yeah. for us. We yeah. we have been excited. JD's been here for about 24 hours now, and we have you and a couple other calls lined mm -hmm. up and. This is great for us yeah, too. It's so awesome. I want to let you know, like we value the time that you just gave us, and it's awesome. No, I appreciate it, guys. Thanks. Like I said, I I'm, uh, I don't want to fanboy too much, but I'm big fans of, of both of you, and and uh, just an honor being on the show. So thanks very much. Now you know we're just losers, <laughs> <laughs> guys. Thank you, so, thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope you're enjoying your day and you got a little something out of this episode, maybe a way that you can start to steer yourself in the right direction and the path that you want to go. And also know that there's outlets like Sean, like us out there if you ever need us. So we we'll catch you guys on the next one. Cheers.